and I'm just going to trace it. Our blade. Ta da! And there we have it. Those of you that go to the dentist and they give you a toothbrush, now's your time to use it. <laughs> Look at this thing. Hey guys, Mike Montanari, Fast Monty's Garage. We're going to be painting today. So, those of you that caught the last uh, episode of the engine pull and tear down because of the bad camshaft. It's time to almost start putting the engine together, but I decided to paint the heads. So if you're here and you want to paint your heads or engine, this is how you do it. So there are two approaches. First approach, you can put the whole engine together and paint it all at one time. So that your fasteners would be painted, etc. We are going to do the show method. So we're going to paint the components then put it together so you can actually see the fasteners like if you use a stainless steel a fastener kit like I'm going to use it's going to pop at the end and and that's what I decided to do so either way you go you're still going to need uh, these com these components so first things first get yourself some good paint this is really good paint from Restoration Colors they have every make and model you want Mopar, Chevy, Ford it doesn't matter. They have the color. This is for uh, a late 60s Pontiac motor. It's in a high temperature enamel. And having said that, you're going to need some high temperature primer for your enamel. Now, this is not a well-known fact, but it's always recommended to use primer because that helps the enamel color stick to whatever you're painting. Oh, boring details, right? Rubber gloves. Fresh razor blade, not a used one. Three quarter inch masking tape, inch and a half masking tape. Toothbrush to keep your teeth clean in the middle of the process. Wax and grease remover, mandatory. Get yourself a, a relatively nice respirator. This is like $20 from uh, Summit Racing. I use it like 20 times, throw it away. Uh, paper towels, the last but not least, Easy Sheet. It's awesome. It's super thin plastic. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to use it for uh, covering areas you don't want paint. And I use it for all kinds of things. So that being said, subscribe if you want to get updated on future um, releases. Uh, because we still have to put the engine together and put it back in the car, etc., etc. Other than that, sit back and enjoy, take some notes, leave a comment if you have a question. Let's get started. So check this out. I'm going ahead and finish up. I removed the tape that was on the intake ports and I'm just adding another piece of tape. Uh, just so we don't get any dust in there and debris. I really don't want paint to be in the areas where the gasket has to sit against the metal. Um, for many reasons, but it's just a good practice not to do that. So we still have our two long lengths of tape underneath protecting the intake and exhaust, or actually the intake ports. And I put a new gasket down and just taped it down. It's lined up on the mounting holes and I'm just gonna trace it with my Sharpie. And there we have it. So we can now take it off. You don't want to leave the blue tape on the gasket too long because it'll take the gasket material off. Probably should have used green tape, which is my favorite. And now we can see where our line is and we can take our, our, our blade and just trace along. It doesn't have to be perfect, which is the other beauty, as long as you're inside the line. Like that. And when you go to take the tape off,
leaves a perfect edge. So I'm going to do that for the rest. Ta-da! Nice and masked. That's pretty easy. All right, next step is I'm going to show you guys how to mask this whole area, including the valves. And this is a um, a trick used in auto body. And I used it a ton when I painted the car. And it has come in handy on masking all kinds of things when I paint. So um, those of you who've probably seen me use this sprayer. It's just a uh, air pressure sprayer. But what I use in it is actually wax and grease remover. So this is this is highly used in auto body. You don't want any um, wax or grease underneath the paint. So you're gonna see me use a lot of this throughout this whole process. Uh, but I'm gonna do that now again with these edges. So this edges has, has some oil on it. Um, I had the valve covers on just protecting from dust. So I'm just gonna go, I sprayed Sprayed some of this on here, and I'm just going to go along that top edge and make sure there's no oil because I want my masking tape to stick. Here's a much better view of, of what I call back taping. So there's two ways to do it. So if we're painting this surface, but we do not want to paint this top surface, we're going to mask that top surface just like this. So the sticky side is on, on this side. And so when you spray paint, it leaves a nice edge. So when you take the masking off, it's nice and clean. Now, in our situation, we're doing the same thing, but we're actually folding the tape back like this, and then we're pu putting our film on here and then stretching it over. So it's a super easy way to mask or just keep areas clean, which is exactly what we're doing. We're keeping our valve area clean from paint or debris and we can keep working. I'm gonna go all the way around and then I'll show you why. Here we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some um, sheeting that's used it's really thin plastic it's called it's called easy sheet this is also used in auto body painting so it's it's made for paint so it's really thin and all I'm gonna do is push it down on those that exposed tape remember we folded the tape over I'm going to pull it kind of tight and then just apply it doesn't have to be exact once we lay it down so now we lay it down The key is to get a fresh razor blade. Okay, a fresh razor blade, and we're gonna gently go right along the, on top of the tape. Really gently, it's just to score, you're basically just scoring the plastic. You do not wanna cut through the tape. And I just missed, of course.
So what that allows us to do And it just comes off nice and clean. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and I'll show you how to fix mistakes that I just made. And there we have it. So there are some areas where you may have cut the plastic side or you went too far into the tape. It's very simple. You just take, take a piece of a tape and go right over it. Just like that. Next step here is, is kind of the most tedious, and that is we have to degrease everything. So those of you that go to the dentist and they give you a toothbrush, now is your time to use it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to degrease everything with that magic potion I showed you. And you got to get everywhere. You got to get in the in the nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna do this, even the spark plug holes, because there's um, you know some anti seize in there around the um, head bolts, especially in the crevices. Oh, and by the way, I'm actually debating shaving this Edelbrock thing off, but the problem is it'll be super smooth in that spot. So it'll be really obvious and the way to make it not obvious is to make the whole thing super smooth and that's a pain uh, i have seen it done before but there's no valve train in there it's super easy when there's no valve train because you can actually um, bead blast them to make it all look the same yeah, it's just a pain in the butt so so all those haters out there you know i don't care it's fine but you have to get in here and get all of the grease out because if you have any grease in there, the paint is going to lift and just create problems. And that's the beauty of what we just did here for the masking is we're not worried about spraying in there. The oil is going to stay where it needs to stay and we can degrease where we want to degrease. So there you have it. I'm going to do this for another two hours for each head and we should be ready to put some primer down and paint them up. See ya. All right, team, so I spent two or three or 10, I don't know how long, cleaning these up, and I think we're ready to prime. So in doing, when whenever, you, whenever I paint, I always try to visualize how I'm gonna get the can around, or, or the spray mechanism. It could be a gun, or it could be a, a can. How am I gonna get to everything? What is my, what are the sequence of events gonna look like? because frankly these are heavy and it's not like I can hold it up and just paint around it. So that's the joy of working in your home garage. You can now get creative. We don't have a professional paint booth we can, that I can walk around the part very easily. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna make a little fixture on my stool. So I have a couple pieces of wood Obviously, I'll cover the stool with uh, some paint-proof stuff, but now, when I get into my paint booth, which I'll show you in a minute, I can actually just turn, turn the head around and paint. Take it off, and since you can't touch it after it's wet, I can actually just take the piece of wood Put another piece of wood down, this one's a 2x4, I didn't have another 2x6. Put the other head on top of that, repeat, because we have to do three coats. We have to do two light coats and one medium wet coat, and with a 10 minute gap in between each coat. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back and we'll be in the paint booth. Hey guys, welcome to my paint booth. I'm just kidding, I don't have a paint booth, come on. This is obviously this, my side yard. I've done some painting in the past. Now I'm ready to prime. I got my, my table. 
so I can easily get all, all the angles. My staging area for my other head and gloves, respirator, and paint. That's all you need, right? So what I'm first step is if you handled your parts barehanded, which I did, I'm now going to briefly go over each each head with the wax and grease remover that we talked about before. I'm going to do both heads. Uh, I also put the spark plugs back in and I also put the uh, water exit uh, nipple and I taped it. I'm going to put AN fittings in later in the series so that's going to be for masking that hole. So that being said I'm going to get to it. I'm going to fast forward through this whole thing but you, get, you can watch and make it less painful. So see you in a minute. Alright guys, coat number three. This can go on medium wet, so I'm gonna kind of douse it on. But then just have to wait and scuff it up after we're done and then lay on our enamel. So probably be in a different outfit because I gotta do it tomorrow. Anyway, see you in a minute. Hey guys, so pretty exciting. We can now put our color on our heads. One major problem. Now, since I like to paint within the 24 hour window, uh, it doesn't say anything on the can about being 24 hours, it's a typical rule of thumb with most paints and most primers. Um, it's raining today, so my outside paint booth isn't gonna cut it. So what I'm going to do is show you how I do my little instant paint booth. Uh, the, the beauty of this instant paint booth is since we're only using uh, a rattle can, we don't have to make it super airtight because if you have like an HVOP gun that uh, does uh, high velocity painting, it gets everywhere. So I'm going to do a, a three wall version. And you remember I discussed Easy Sheet in the, in the very beginning. This is where it comes in handy because you can make an instant paint booth. This is actually 12 feet wide. So what I'm going to do is just take my measuring tape and I'm going to measure on the floor where I want my, I'm just going to basically make a U shape in this general vicinity. And then I'm going to use my, my green tape. I'm going to tape it to the ceiling, tape it to the floor. It's super lightweight. It won't come off. and We'll go from there. So you're going to see it in high speed, in high speed action. Be right back. There we go. I think that took 10 minutes. We'll have to rewind the tape and see how long it took. But I'm pretty happy with that and that's what I would do uh, in a pinch. So when we get back, I'm going to put my stool back in the middle, put the heads on ready to go and wipe them down real quick and uh, put some color on. Be right back. Alright guys, here we go. So I already wiped down uh, most of the upper part of the surface with the wax and grease remover on a white paper towel not directly on the paint just to get any dust off um, I used my bare hands when I put this back on the board which I should not have done I wiped that area too and so uh, it's the same drill as before with the primer we're gonna wait 
roughly 10 minutes. I'm going to make sure I get paint on here because I'm going to use that as a as my tack test. So when that, when that gets tacky, I can put another coat on. So we're going to do three really light coats and then do a medium wet heavy. So um, I'm going to fast forward through most of it, but that's what you're going to see me do. You do not have to cover the gray on the first two applications of paint. Super light. Just super light. It's got metallic in it. So you want it to kind of float on the surface. So same drill. Got my gloves and got my mask. So here we go. Guys, so we're right out of the paint booth. I hope you liked it. That's that's how I do things around here. We're gonna take this masking off and see how we did. You can kind of see the edge. The paint's not totally dry yet, which is good. I hate to quote the A-Team, but I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> oh man! Check that out! It looks so good. Oh, well, good news, bad news. Good news is, it looks really good. The bad news is, the rest of the parts don't. So we're going to have to paint the block and the water pump and the timing chain cover to match this. It looks amazing. Oh, man. And I apologize, guys, but I got too excited when I took the easy sheet off of here, the masking, and I wanted to put the valve cover on to see how it popped. Oh, man, it looks awesome. So I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, I hope you sat through it all. I know it was a lot and it's tedious to clean. That's the worst part. But once you start laying color, get, you to feel proud of your accomplishments. So uh, I think our next level is going to be painting the block. And you know, I'll probably do a full little mini paint booth for that one because I cannot put the block outside in the other imaginary paint booth. Anyway, uh, trials and tribulations of working from your home garage. So, until next time, build them fast and drive them faster. <laughs>